Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heroes of the Veil Chapter 2. If you have not watched a Heroes of the Veil previously to this, this is an excellent jumping in point. And I'm not promising that's going to be any less crazy than Chapter 1. So uh, don't feel safe, everyone. <laughs> we are joined today with uh, Hope Lavelle playing Penelope Half Pint and Bradford as Briv Steel Marrow, Lauren Urban playing Orakira Ildrex, and Jen Kretschmer playing Alindra. I'm just not saying her last name because I butcher it every time. So. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. <laughs> it's not that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not that it's not a great last name. It's just that I am, I, I just can't, I just can't. <laughs> I'm, I'm bad with Aww. names, as we've all demonstrated before. Uh, so today we are starting on a brand new chapter of Heroes of the Veil, as I said, and our heroes have been separated for almost five years after the killing of a god, and the bringing back of life to an entire world, the world of Valheim. Now, the cities have been rebuilt. Wizards, clerics, sorcerers, and warlocks, bards, druids, they have helped regrow the force of the world. Um, stone castles have risen up from the ground because of wizards casting, you know, casting and summoning stone out of the bones of the earth itself. So much of the world has been restored beyond that even. Not only were all the people who had died in Valheim restored, but all the people for hundreds and hundreds of years who had died. So now there is lots of people in Valheim. Whether there, it was once a barren landscape of just undeath, it is now billions of people are now alive billions of sort you know there are now thousands upon thousands of sorcerers and wizards and now is an, a new time of high magic and there has been a peace a lasting peace because of the tragedies that had occurred but that peace is now wearing thin as people are starting to divide the world into various fiefdoms and kingdoms and tensions old tensions and old grudges start to come forth again as people forget the tragedy that had befallen this the, this entire world for thousands of years and so the heroes of the veil had decided to come back together after five years to see how everyone had been doing many of you have been all over the world some of you have been perhaps to several worlds and you are all approaching the city and you all, you all agree to go to the end that you once went to five years ago at the end of Killing a God. <laughs> uh, and that the name of that inn, that particular establishment, is the Blue Kraken Inn. What are the Heroes of the Veil doing and how are they coming back into town? And when you tell me, uh, we'll start with Penelope Halfpint. Uh, describe your character and uh, who they are. Uh, okay, starting with me. Um, <laughs> Penelope is, uh, when you see this, you'll literally see this tiny little shrub walking around town. She's completely covered <laughs> in a cloak of moss and twigs, and she wears um, a Twinga mask, which has almost a constellation on it. It's made of like uh, rock almost. Uh, so you basically don't see Penelope. You just see this like shrub walking around and it's tiny. It's like two and a half feet tall. Uh, and she walks into this inn, doesn't even look around, just goes and sits in the corner. A Twinga mask? That I can say. <laughs> 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 Briv Steelmarrow, describe yourself and how you enter into town. So uh, Briv has been spending a lot of time in uh, places where there's not a lot of civilization. So uh, he's been wandering uh, the wastes uh, kind of in, in some pretty dangerous areas uh, in the region. And to be honest, it was a miracle that a message got to him in the first place for this reunion to occur uh, five years later. But uh, he uh, got the message and ultimately he does not walk into town. Uh, he is astride spiral. And ultimately uh, you hear 
griffin shriek and uh, fly over the city. And uh, there's not any kind of like flashy or showy display necessarily, but um, just kind of a, a, a quick pass to make sure that there are no threats or anything that, that he perceives on the ground. And then uh, he lands outside and uh, just kind of pats Spiral. And you see that uh, Spiral takes back off into the air. And uh, you see that Briv is no longer wearing armor. Uh, he has just uh, pretty rugged clothing on. He has a mask that uh, looks like some kind of creature that's pretty hard to identify, but it, it kind of, the skull of the creature kind of comes up uh, to a couple of points, not horns, but just like it's been broken off. And then you see the teeth of the skeleton come down over uh, where his uh, mouth area is. Uh, he kind of pulls that off and back, places it in his satchel and uh, shakes all the dust off of him everywhere and uh, kind of kicks his spurs a little bit and then uh, walks into the tavern and sees uh, Penelope in the corner. And he just simply says, where is everyone else? And he plops down beside her. As you, uh, as you were flying over the city, um, the city that had once, once been called Kraken's Fall, but has now become the new capital city uh, for the Imperium. The Imperium is, well, an empire, but an empire that has is essentially run by king, but who also has several of the, f the free peoples of the world on his council. Elves, dwarves, halflings, people from all over the world. It is not the only empire. It's not the only kingdom. But as you were flying overhead, you noticed several ships, virtually an armada, with red sails. They do not look like they are primed for combat, but they... Clearly there is some sort of meeting occurring. Uh, you have been in the wastelands too long to know what the symbols are on those those sails. Uh, Orkira Eldrex, describe yourself and how you enter into town. Orkira enters smiling at the griffin flying overhead. Kind of this wistful little grin uh, on her big giant dragonborn face. Uh, she's a golden dragonborn, kind of small for a dragonborn, but it's offset by the fact that she's got these wings and huge spikes and a, a tail. And uh, she's walking in uh, cautiously, but is uh, confidently moving kind of through the town towards the inn. She enters and is like, at the very last minute, realizing she's probably still covered in soot and probably smells like sulfur and so she's like brushing herself off and realizing that she's probably not that presentable and notices Briv and Penelope in the corner and says hey hi I saw I saw Spiral he looks really good hi and she'll wander on over all right you wander into the inn <clears throat> Alindra how do you enter into the town and the same way that I always have, pausing on the way to, to listen to bards, uh, tossing them some coin, as I do. Um, and not much has changed for Alindra. Five years is a blip on the radar in terms of my life. So it's been some time to study and meet some new people, and travel a bit, um, learn, uh, do some research into what we've been following and the things that have been following us. Um, but it hasn't been that long. Elves typically go quite a long time, you know, much longer than five years without seeing one another. So you know, this is casual meeting. It hasn't been that long. Uh, so an interest oh. strolls into the inn. Um, everyone is wearing masks. It seems to be the thing to do. So she has a minor <laughs> of her face. But uh, it's, uh, it's of an owl. Um, and uh, it has uh, uh, sardonyx inlaid on it, um, similar to, to the homestone she carries. Uh, and okay. she enters. Uh, 
her blue and white hair trailing behind her. And you see all your friends sitting at a table. What do you say to each other <laughs> after five years? <clears throat> Are we supposed to be incognito? Because I've kind of ruined all of this. I, I, is this, this wasn't part of the message. Sorry. Penelope has, is, was like. I only get 25 words in the sending. <laughs> <laughs> Penelope's actually underneath the table. And you just see her, like, her little hands come up on the table. And she, like, drops these pebbles. And you just hear from underneath the table. I brought you guys some, some pebbles. I brought you guys some pebbles. Oh, thanks. Brove immediately picks it up, starts examining said pebble. <laughs> Describe the pebbles. They're very Penelope. shiny. They're, they're very shiny, and I picked them out just for you guys. Huh. Ooh. Thank you. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, no. Very subtly, we'll cast... Uh, detect magic on this to make sure that it's not a magical stone that she's using to trick us because I haven't seen her in five years and she could be a god again. <laughs> Fool me uh, once, shame on me. Are any of these pebbles magical? They're magical not, to not me. Magical. <laughs> okay. no, they're not magical. They're Brib, magic we'll get to your friendship. Const- in the morning, we'll get to your, your <laughs> constitution saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> you're French. gonna have to go through. <laughs> Is it a snack? <laughs> Can't be that. Uh, what a taste! I've eaten worse. Um, Me too. It says <laughs> difficult to bite into for sure. I'll save mine for later. Thanks. It's good to see all of you again. I mean, it's been a while. And you? I, I kind of missed you. I mean, we spent all like an entire lifetime together, so everyone was saying it was good to get a break, but I kind of missed everybody. It's only been five years. I feel as if I should return some type of banter with thee, <laughs> but I am uncertain what it should be. Why are we here? That's a good question. I know why I am here. Do you all not feel the tremors? The tremors that disturb my forest? It's true, all of the tree ants are worried that these tremors are unnatural and I have to find the source. Yeah, I, I felt them too, but they're kind of normal where I've been hanging out, so it wasn't until I found out that that was happening other places. And so you are uh, talking with each other at the end. Um, Penelope, half yeah, fine. You see outside, even though you're underneath the table, you hear uh, some kind of interesting sound coming from one of the glass windows. And I'm not quite sure I... why. I quickly put my mask on, put the hood of my shrubby thing on, and I'm going to scurry through the tables with my halfling nimbleness to to go Um, check it out. Before she runs away too much, I I, I would like to take my hand, clap it on her shoulder, and say, it's good to see you, Penelope. And I'm going to cast non-detection on her. Um, So she cannot be found through any divination magic. Or scrying um, for okay. eight hours. Oh, all right. Interesting. All right, you cast it. Uh, Penelope, do you look through the window? Yes. You see an old grizzled man missing almost the entirety of all his teeth on the right side. Maybe a victim of some battle of some kind that he survived, but most of the teeth have been knocked out. He's a fisherman. He's cleaning very large, tremendously huge fish, swordfish, that type of thing, um, on the docks, right by the stone. And the blood from from cleaning these fish is pooling next to him as he's doing so. And there's a quite large puddle of blood. It's kind of gross seeing a, a fish be cleaned. 
and but most people are paying in no mind wagons are going by people are walking by this this large puddle of blood but as you look closer you see what looks like a tiny little man with a white beard and a red cap in the reflection in the blood and he just waves with a scythe smiling at you and then a wagon wheel runs through the puddle of blood and the vision disappears and you no longer see a reflection of him uh, penelope will scurry back to the table uh, well um this has been really fun very nice meeting everyone again and um i, I have to go this was a really bad idea goodbye and she's going to make her way for the door. You run for the door. You, you immediately run into someone's stomach. <laughs> it's like hard. As soon as that happens, I just fall to the ground and pretend to be a shrub. <laughs> in the middle of an inn. Deception. You just, you it's like a possum this. playing dead. Uh, and there is this eight foot tall Koatoa. <laughs> With a perplexed look and kind of annoyed look on his face. Oh, boom, boom. And so he just, he's got a apron on and he's fussing tables. And he, so he's got a bunch of uh, tinkers and people's food plates and he's just like... And just... To the back room. I'll get up and walk on over to the shrub. Uh, Melody, I, I think you gotta get like five more feet out the door before you you do that. I I, I do have to say that you're you you do a remarkable job at looking like a shrub in the middle of a bar. So there's no <laughs> doubt to anyone looking at it that you are in fact a shrub. The only problem with that lovely house plant it, yeah, is that the deception does house. not carry through to the rest of the inn. <laughs> you're you're an amazing shrub. If I didn't see you do this, I think there was a shrub in the middle of the, the inn, but... Riv uh, kind of huffs and gets up from the table and walks over, and he's trying to grab enough of her clothing that he can just pick the shrub up <laughs> and carry it back to the table. He's like, I must not be seen. I must not be seen. I must not be seen. No. Oh, you, you hear this? Oh, his, his Briv, like, picks you up, and there's this, this shrub and little eyes sticking out. <laughs> what? art thou doing and he just walks over to the table and drops her <laughs> gently <laughs> you know how you gently drop a baby <laughs> well, there's nothing if not a gentleman <laughs> okay uh that's what i want to say that's your action like roll for initiative for meeting each other uh so and we you, attack you the shrub and we attack the shrub and everyone had a good oh. laugh uh, uh. You laughed, we laughed, we killed the table, it was a good time. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you laughed, we laughed, the table laughed, we killed the table. Yeah, that's right, that's right, thank you. There we uh, go. Is anyone you... doing anything else? Okay. Yes, yeah. um, I think we should find a place to have a conversation. Um, perhaps Not here? Privately? Oh. Perhaps privately? From... As you say so, a head pops up from behind you. What? What's more? What's more private than this? My fine Hello, establishment all. of, of secrets. Uh, nice to see everybody back. Nice uh, how, how you doing, Riv? Steel Bottom, uh, Lindy Lou, Sarah Band. Makes some kind of vulgar Orc. symbol <laughs> in Orcish. And, it's it's great to meet. It's great to see pint. I think I could use a pint. It's been a while. Uh, oh, oh, I can. I'll get right on that right now. That's boom boom. Someone is Good. finally making sense. Hey, get it's... get Briv a pint, and we're gonna go grab a room and talk. Apparently, because we can't talk here. Correction. Well, we we could talk here. Yeah. Gallon. All right. Oh, yeah, we have we have gallons. We call it the the. The big slurp. Yep, we got that. We get sometimes we get some big, bigger people in there. That's <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Remember, get them the boom boom size. I am not uh, paying for this. We're gonna get one. 
Uh, what? <laughs> we are friends. Friends do not pay. <laughs> it's uh. subtle, but you notice that Alindra is looking around the room constantly. Okay. I feel like maybe friends sometimes pay friends for giant jugs of booze. <laughs> I might yeah, be wrong. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I, I got this. I got this. I, I'm not using it anyway. And I'll pay him whatever he needs for okay. a gallon and, <laughs> and a pint. Uh, do, do you got a, a place we can talk that's not here? Apparently everybody's squirrely. In fact, uh, Ralph, how have you been keeping? How are things? Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been keeping busy. I uh, refurbished this inn, been hanging yes. out in town. And uh, just been playing the piano and trying to keep I lay low. Turns out Boom Boom wasn't my son at all, but I, I feel like he's my adopted son. And he was actually a Koatoa. So surprise on all of us. We all changed except for him. And uh, it was confusing time from Boom Boom. You know, like how like a, a dog doesn't recognize you when you shave your beard. Yeah, so uh, that, that, that's how it was for Boom Boom. But he only like smashed me into the ground like twenty times, so it was it was rough. But we, we got everything squared away. Sorry, what was your question about just... that gallon? Boom, boom, one gallon of uh, ale or whiskey. I forgot which one. The shrub is inching away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't, yeah. Um, no, I, I just wanted to see. You're, if you you're leaving it. a clean spot in the tavern as you do so. <laughs> <laughs> anything, uh, any, any, anything interesting recently? I mean, obviously, the last time we all saw each other, there was a bit of an incident. <laughs> you're. <laughs> Boom Boom just puts down what looks like just uh, just the biggest cup you've ever seen um, that's like held together with like wax and wood and it's just like a, this makeshift uh, tankard that is ridiculous and it literally said it's literally called the Boom Boom and Boom Boom sets that down onto the table and picks up an entire cask of ale and lifts and just like sticks his finger in the bottom of it and sticks his finger back out and then it just pours just funnels all the ale into the cup <laughs> as as Briv also gets a few early slurps in there <laughs> as this is happening and then boom boom just goes and puts it back <laughs> under his his arm and just walks back to the kitchen Thou shouldest learn language, Boom Boom. Uh, hey, Penelope, have, have, have trouble. You want some of this? Perhaps you should learn Boom Boom's language, Bruce. If he could tell me what his language was, I would learn it. Crotella. It sounds like nothing to me. <laughs> so how am I to learn Koatoa? Without a Linda cast tongues to on herself and starts, starts speaking Kuatoa fluently. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me Boom Boom's been speaking in like Shakespearean English this whole time. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to require that Alindra speak. A, 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 I need, I need at least a full sentence or two in uh, Kuatoa. Uh, <laughs> what, what did it sound like before? I mean, it's, 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 it's fiction. It sounds like a dying triceratops. <laughs> Clarice, okay, now I soothing. There's one possessed. <laughs> no, no, this isn't the kind of thing that I can solve. Sorry. It's kind of soothing, though. It's, it's like whale song. It's nice. Yeah. Sounds. It sounds like a mix of bubbles and. <laughs> Yeah, try Ceratops, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, my favorite moment of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so you have your drinks for those who don't who wanted them. A bush is trying to escape the the blue kraken in at this moment. Um, people Rick are only walks over and grabs her again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On, ongoing, ongoing situation. Do you get a private room or do you stay here? The place is quite full. And I need... You do notice that a cloaked figure is in the inn. Watching. Um, are the figures... One figure. Has... Uh, does it look remotely like anything we've dealt with before? No, it's a... It's an ornate... It's wearing an ornate cloak. And you can tell, even though it's slightly hooded, this creature has horns. And its scales are green. And it has wings and a tail. Does Brib, and, does Brib notice this? And does uh, is this creature like paying attention to us yes intently and uh, it almost seems like slight green smoke is coming out of its nose yeah is something on it, thine mind it stands up <clears throat> well met i believe I, you are the famous heroes of the veil tis us i was wondering if you might take a job I'm sorry, who are you? I am a re representative. My name is Keth. I am uh, an adjudicator for the newly founded Dragon Empire. We are investigating some disappearances of Dragonborn in the city. We believe they have either been wrongfully detained or something worse. And as he speaks, you can see, that you can smell the, the, the faint smell of almost like chlorine. And, and you see green gas slowly move between his teeth and up his nose as he speaks. I know I've been away for a while, but have I heard about any of this? Does any of this sound familiar to me? You didn't hear that some of the dragonborn were mustering and thinking of forming some sort of coalition or government, but this not anywhere near where you've been living. This might be on the other side of the world for all you know. You had heard rumors, but nothing substantial. Where art the dragonborn mustard? <clears throat> um, right. Uh, we are very far from here across the ocean. What evidence dost thou have that dragonborn are being taken? We heard reports that several dragonborn had gone missing. And so I was sent in to rectify the situation. Missing from this town, missing from other places, missing from where? Several dragonborn had been sent to this town and had gone missing by us. Okay, going to look over at Penelope and like watch her as she says this and says, uh, I'm certainly interested in this, but I, I think we have other plans. Does the shrub say anything? <laughs> shrub shrugs. Okay. <laughs> I need our on that. Um, I, Keth, eyes you all like. Just let me know if you hear of anything and report back to me. If you see anything in the city, if you hear of any other Dragonborn missing, I will pay gladly for information. And he plops down a bag of gold onto the table and walks off. Oh, and where, out of wait, the where, inn. Oh, is there a card in there? Because I, I, I don't know where to find him. There's a sending stone. Oh. Oh. He's serious. This guy's serious. Um. I mean. 
Penelope, you were talking about your forest, and then you tried to leave, and now we've got a job. I don't, I don't want to, like, ab abandon what? you. What just happened? Uh, I think what we just got hired. The Penelope. Yeah. What? I grow tired of recovering the little shrinking shrub. Would you like another pebble? No, I would not. I would like for thee to explain why thou art trying to escape this place. Uh, what? Oh, I think well, hello, friends. Perhaps we should go speak somewhere else. She obviously is giving away her own marbles. Oh, do you want it back? Sorry. And I'll grab it and hold it back out to you. I, I, if you need it. Shall take a day or two for mine to return to thee. <laughs> You're giving me back your pebble. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, if you'd rather I keep it, I'm, I'll, I'll keep it. She'll tuck it back in her pocket. Okay. Um, is there a place we can go to sit down and have a conversation privately in a tiny hut? Irritating uh, bar <laughs> owner man that used to be a fish man. I just yell that out. And hope that Rarv comes. Uh, his name is Rarv. I know that. I'm trying Half to orc who's me. always been irritating no matter what <laughs> form like... or shape he's had. I what would you like? One shape. Briv the Beautiful. Hast thou he... heard of any missing dragon-born scaled people in this region? Uh, not so much. No. I've heard it. I feel like there's been strange sounds in the middle of the night. Sometimes, from month to month, screeches that could have been dragonborn, I believe. Uh, but I never found them. And no one I know saw. So it's possible. The city has become perhaps a bit more dangerous lately. Let's go. Let's go find that private room we can all talk in. There's a private room upstairs. You can uh, take yeah, that. Yeah, Lundra can do that tiny hut thing. I haven't been in that tiny hut in forever. That'll be fun. <laughs> I miss that tiny hut. I hate that place. <laughs> uh, as we cannot, you, uh, are you going upstairs? Tiny hut. We and cannot he's got tiny a room. hut. <laughs> Riv is not tiny. This is Big my life. Big guy in a little hut. <laughs> <laughs> Big guy in a little right. hut. Aww. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> that needs to be art. Uh, <laughs> so, as you're walking up the stairs, a, a man who looks dressed very poorly, his clothes are ragged and, and kind of disheveled, you see him walking down the stairs, and he, he kind of bumps into you, and as he does so, you notice that he, ha he has a wand on his belt. And beneath these ragged clothes, his clothes are rather fine and well-made. And he immediately shrinks away from you and continues down the stairs. <clears throat> uh, Do you all go back? familiar at all? No, but... Uh, I'll take perception checks from people. Sure. Riv abstains. <laughs> the first roll of chapter two is a natural 20. Oh, wow. Yes. Yep. And I got uh, one in 27. My Only downhill from here. <laughs> yep, you... everything. That was it. That's the last one of the whole chapter. Everything. She she's like, oh, the first roll of the you know chapter two is a twenty. Oh no, I rolled a pre-roll and it was a twenty. Always gonna tell me. She did foresee this. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, a twenty and an eight as my as my portents for today, but uh, uh, I, I did not use them for this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> And so you can actually, with your dragonborn senses, smell fear off this person. Can I tell They're who sweating or what profusely? He's you also you also smell strange. Uh, there's a certain scent to spell components that comes with a wizard. 
and you could smell the various items that he has on himself. Sulfur, charcoal, you could hear the scurrying of beetles inside of jars, things that are all on his belt. And uh, that's what you notice about him. Human. <clears throat> I'll wait until we're in the room and okay. ostensibly safe or in a tiny hut. I don't know. Okay. But I'll, I'll hold off until we're in a room before I say anything. It's a bit of a banquet hall that Rar keeps uh, separate for special occasions, weddings, uh, or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you, you get inside. Right. It's a double doored room and there's plenty of room. Um, and you have a, uh, a, ver a very good look at most of the city. <clears throat> Britt walks in and kind of sweeps. That's just like a habit of his. He's just like seeing if anybody's hiding along the walls right. or, you know, whatever. Uh, as you do, so yeah, you're, 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 um, you don't run into anything. Like you, you, you're fairly confident there's nothing invisible in this room. And you look out the windows and you can actually see these ships, these ships with red sails starting to dock very close to the inn. And there are a lot of them. It's some sort of, and horns blare outside announcing some sort of delegation uh anyone with any anyone can make a history check at this point to know what those those sales are that would be a 20. this is the goblin empire and okay. one of those specific sales indicates that the king of the hobgoblins uh Gidras, who's actually the king of egg bears, goblins, anything that's goblinoid uh, falls under this empire, um, is arriving. And they have not had the best relations with the Imperium previously to this moment. So this appears to be a diplomatic delegation. And there are a lot of them. And they're making port right now. Just a few blocks away. Had I heard any talk about this in the town? About they were As you're wandering around, absolutely. There are more soldiers around town than you would typically, typically see, even for the capital city. Uh, there's Some people seem more tense. Some people seem see this as like a potential economic boon to the city, having uh, goblins in, in, in town for a, a diplomatic delegation. So there, there's definitely flowers have been put out, you know, waving flags, all of that. All along the main drag. The main drag basically goes all the way down to very close to the inn itself into the center of the city. Because this is, for you know, foremost a, a port town. So. And... Um. Empires tend to fight and discuss and argue and <laughs> reconcile and on and on. That's just sort of what they do. But we are dealing with something a bit... Uh, probably taking precedence, I believe. So I will pass the tiny hut okay, um, as a ritual and invite everyone in. Does everyone go, everyone go into the tiny hut? Or Kira looks super happy at the tiny hut for a second and then gives Briv a look and goes, oh, I'm sorry. Reluctantly. <laughs> it's upgraded. Um, it's what? I have an even nicer one, but I figured <laughs> we'd save that for another time. Um, As you cast it, there is a chandelier that gets pushed offset by the top of the hut <laughs> making a, a great deal of noise and just kind of hanging and swinging there uh, i'll fix that later <laughs> it's true we could easily repair it. um take that fish man <laughs> and then Briv goes into the hut all right well we're here we're they're gonna be best friends, I swear to God, at level twenty. <laughs> yep. I think we're not gonna be able to separate the two. To be <laughs> <laughs> be a wedding in store. 
<laughs> They'll still call well, each other by derogatory names, but it'll be like derogatory pet names. Uh, it'll be it'll be with love instead well, of with. They both with have disdain. daughters. They'll have children that marry. They'll join their houses. It'll be very interesting. <laughs> uh, so does does everyone does everyone we need a like fan fiction? Does everyone uh, go into the tiny hut, including the. Uh, the, the small bush, once known as Penelope Half Pint. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Everyone jo goes inside the hut, and you immediately feel that the atmosphere is unique in here. You remember that familiar, almost magic like smell and a, a static in the air. Like, what ozone. does magic smell like, Todd? Um, this magic smells. Magic smells very differently at different times. For this tiny hut, it smells almost um, like there's st static in the air. Like it's, it's a about strange to rain. smell. Not like that. Mm. Yes. That's always how it smelled, though, right? This is not. Yes. No, this is not an unusual smell. This is. There's nothing wrong with a tiny hut. It's nostalgic. Yeah. My pl my this players like, don't trust like me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this I did is, this start is the... this game by saying, you know, be afraid. It's still going to be crazy. So, I mean, <laughs> wait, I missed that memo. <laughs> you needed a memo for that? <laughs> you, you didn't get the memo? Was you chapter one not a memo? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 17 episodes of a memo. All right, Penelope, like, come clean. What's going on? Why are you a shrub? What's going on with your homeland? Why are we all here? What's going on? What? You we were talking asking. down <laughs> you were talking downstairs about like tremors and your your forest and things were bad. And now you're shrub. But I wasn't the one who called us all together. I thought it was you guys. No, it wasn't me. Well, I I, I was left so confused. I haven't left the forest for years. No, so this I was just... important. M Mr. Dungeon Master, who called us all? How, how were we called to this? Yeah. You were all sent a message. Like, like a, a from everyone message saying that we have decided to all get together. Who said it? Not, well, apparently not of <laughs> you. Maybe it was a friend. I don't know. <laughs> Briv does not send letters. <laughs> I don't get much mail service, and the, the I I thought that was Alindra because she's the only other one I know that can do that. It wasn't you. No, I mean it, it was a like a telepathic message. No, it was a a message. A message. Yeah, a written message. Oh, that, a magical okay. written message that just appeared in people's hands. Oh, all right, that makes oh, we all sense. trusted it. Great. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I, that, no. <laughs> Can that I really still have it? mine? Can I pull mine out? Yeah. All right. We're of 80s. Uh, <laughs> I'll pull out this, this piece of parchment that looks like it's been burnt several times, although you don't know why, and she'll put it down on the bottom of the, the floor of the tiny hut and go, yeah, I got this, see? Seem to burn. Identify? Uh, Will that it, give us... You can cast. Uh, it, it's magical. Absolutely. Right. But other than that, no. There's no other what, information what on kind it. Of magic? Is it is it illusory script or is it? It's it's illusory script. Yes. Were there any charms on it? Anything out of the that ordinary? That is why I it? lost it. It's no. illusory script. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You I got a doctor's. Briv has a doctor's visit. The likes the, the gods has not foreseen coming up in another episode. <laughs> <laughs> and I, we are missing Keen as well. He had business in the Fey Wild last I heard. He left me. That was the last time I saw him. That was three years ago. He left thee. To fend for thyself? Oh, 
it's okay. He had very important it's things to do. And I had stayed in the Feywild for too long. And um, yeah, it made me kind of loopy. And then I came back. Acknowledging that thou hast a problem is the first step towards finding a solution. Would you like a pebble? No, I would not. Okay. Thank thee, though. <laughs> All right. Do we think Keen sent this? And if he did, why is he in? Notice that we always blame Keen for things when he is not here. Well, he can't defend himself. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably a bad thing. We probably shouldn't do that. No, it's... it's Anyway, if he sent this, it doesn't make any sense because he should be here with us. It's right? true. I... Unless he's dead. I think we I should probably... He cannot die. Penelope. Do you recall the last time... No, you weren't here. Um... The rest of you, do you recall the last time we were all together? Yeah. Do you remember those creatures? Those yeah. creatures that I heroically slew? Yes. Yeah. Well, they, um... They were not appeased. I figure that might be the case. Yes, they have um, continued on with pursuing their original glory. So they are looking for the little shrub, is what thou art yes. saying. Is that why you're pretending to be a... a hunt? Oh, Keen told me not to be seen. He gave me this ring. Um, it keeps me from being seen by Celestials, but um, I just haven't been out in a long time. Uh, I spent very much, uh, like, a lot of time in the forest with my new clan um, and, and the tree ants, and I just don't your clan? out here. Hmm? What is your clan? My clan of... Oh, did I say something? You said uh, you have a new clan. Yes. Who are Twingas. they? Twingas. Twingas? Oh, what? well, let's see. Um, well, there's, um, Kaku and Gwen and, and Walton. I certainly believe that someone is Cuckoo around here. Kaku. Kaku. Cuckoo. Is your new clan a bunch of birds? No, they're... No, that was they're involved with Twingas. my clan. Um, um, what is Well, um, um, I feel, are, you, are you guys interrogating me? Did I do something wrong again? No, no, just trying to catch no. up. No, where just, you Penelope, are. Penelope, Penelope, which could be interpreted as an interrogation, yes. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry if it sounds like an interrogation. We just haven't seen you in a while and we missed you and wanted to find out what you were up to, that's all. But if you don't want to talk about it, that's okay. I Kira, believe she needs to talk about it. Where have you been, Orkira? Uh, hanging out in the mountains. Well, all right, technically a volcano, but you know it was in the mountains. Lot, lots of, lots of mountains. Sorry if I still smell. It's been a while. You do pick up the the smell of sulfur. Off of Orkira. Slight. Not offensive, but you can smell it. This is probably the coolest it's been in a while, and it's, it's one of the reasons I'm kinda happy for the tiny hut. I mean I don't I don't mind being warm, but it's a lot more comfortable, I have to say. I, I kinda wish I could make one of these. I could try and teach you. Oh, that'd be nice. We can work on that. Um River, uh, where, where have you been? In the wasteland. 
defending those who can't defend themselves, people thou wilt never know, but I know them, and that's what matters. I was happy to see that Spiral's feeling better. It looks like you... He is in fine health. He's even dropped a few pounds. Where has he dropped them? I don't know. (laughs) Probably in his droppings. He does it sometimes in the air. Oh. Is that like an attack maneuver? I I would to weaponize it, yes. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't keep attacking you if I got hit with that. No, that'd be bad. Sometimes we collect it and then sling it like in an atatl. (laughs) Wow, there is a name for a weapon I have not heard in a long time. (laughs) (laughs) I am a master with multiple varieties of weapons. The universe's most weirdly effective yet pain in the ass weapon ever invented by the human race. (laughs) Okay. Sometimes simple is better. Try to shoot one. It's really fun. (laughs) The easier way to pronounce it is poop scoop. Yeah. (laughs) I'd imagine it's more effective because you've got spiral. Like the large griffin gives you a lot of ammo. He does. And the leverage. (laughs) It's all in the the wrist snap. Uh, What about you, Alindra? What what have you been up to? Just... Standard fair, following the uh, rebuilding of the library and doing some research, meeting some people, um, and looking into the uh, the lovely uh, individuals we met the, the last time we were together. And you have learned quite a bit about them. I have. Um. So. Oh. I actually would like to take a look and, uh, as a ritual cast, identify on Penelope's ring to make sure it actually does what she's saying it does. Okay. Are you casting identify on it? Yes. Um, As you cast your spells, the ring glows, and it clearly is a ring that is meant to hide one's location, specifically against celestials. Okay. Does it's it's effective? Oh yes. Okay. Uh, it's exceptionally powerful. That's why it's only geared towards one specific type of creature. Okay. Um. Don't take that off. And um, the the creatures we met the. Uh, justice keepers. Um, They're known as the Remnants. They are the last of the... an army of Celestials uh, that worshipped a now long dead god. Uh, The many-eyed god, and when, when, when their god died, uh, they removed their eyes in mourning, and now they have charged themselves with ensuring that mortals never kill the god again. They are remnants, both in name and in existence, and they are pursuing us and our Trump. I guess it's a good thing Keen had that ring. Yes. But what? Why? Because who, who would kill you... a god? We would remember. And I Thou message. Do you not remember? But it was just a dream. Can I do any kind of check on Penelope to see? I mean, she talked about being in the Feywild and getting confused, but can I tell whether there's something else going on? Um, I mean, it's all on how she's presenting herself. She's. Halt! Did she recording. not say that her new name was Never Remember? Never, never remember. Never, no, never, never Ember. 
Never like, end. Like, never end. Not embering. Yeah. Never. Never. Never remember. remember. That's the the name you took, and then that's what the Celestials were looking for. So if you've left that name behind, that kind of makes sense. Right. Never, ember, never, ember, never, ember. No, it was just, it was just a dream. All of it, the paint. No, it was all just a dream. No, no. it was sadly not. You hear a on the hut. Someone's knocking uh, on the I, hut. I, I see out. So who's there? You what? I can see out. Oh, you can. Uh huh. There's no one there. What? What is Rakira I'm doing? Sure just fish man. Oh no, I was just asking Alindra, is that a new feature on the hut? Does it do uh, that? No, it's always been like that. You can always see out. It's always been you can no, see the out. Knockings. The, the, the no, knock the knocking. No, the knocking. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, that's uh, that's likely someone who is, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and send Griff. Uh, to see? He always wants to be in the room where it happens, but he is on the edge, and we shall keep him there. Don't make me start singing, because that'll be the rest of this entire episode. <laughs> now that I know mm. that, I will not throw away my shot. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I will start singing Pirates of Penzance just to counter it. I will. It'll happen. Suddenly this becomes the Broadway show. I feel as if I need to pee in my pants as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well done. Quick, I, I want to do something. What is Griff doing? I can have Griff change a form where Griff can see invisibility. So, um... Let's see which one that is. Mm-hmm. Trying to figure out which one that is that has the seals. Was it the pseudo dragon? That's what I thought, but I'm not. I was assuming uh, it would be a pseudo well, dragon. Oh, yeah, they have, well, no, they have blind sight. They don't have. While she's looking okay. that up, are the doors yeah. to this area open? Does, the Tressum. Like... Oh, the Tressum. No, the, the, room, the door, doors are not open, but you can. Can everyone see outside the hut? Yes. Okay. You don't see anything don't outside see the anything. hut? Nothing. Oh, bother. I shall go investigate. And Briv's just going to walk out. And Briv, wait, please. Um, and I sent Griff changes into a tressin and then uh, goes outside. Uh, Briv, do you allow yourself to be stopped? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> for, for what a changed man. Um, you watch Griff, who was previously an owl sitting on, on Alindra's shoulder, uh, transform into this cat like creature with wings. Yeah, it's um, hideous. <laughs> Insult Griff. Apologize. I shall not apologize for such an ugly creature. Griff, apologize. <laughs> I am sorry that fate has dealt so unkindly to thee. I send Griff over. Or send Griff over to Briv. <laughs> Thou shalt not send Briv anyway. Apparently, uh, Alindra has leveled up so much now that Briv is a familiar here, and you have to do whatever she says. <laughs> um, so, so this is this is like it's a normal cat size. It's uh, so Griff goes over and hops onto your shoulder, and they nip at your ear, and then fly out. <laughs> Ah! And I make symbols with my hand, some kind of holy symbol, trying to get the demon away from me. Uh, <laughs> the power of Avandra compels thee. 
Briv, Briv, <laughs> Griff, now I'm doing it. Thanks. Uh, Griff flies out. <laughs> And Griff disappears. Now, dost thou want me to go um, investigate? I can sense where they are. They're right outside the room. They're right inside the room, outside the hut. They're inside the room, outside the hut, but I cannot see them? No. Great. All right, so there's something very interesting going on. What happened to your cat? <laughs> um, Chris you got what it is... Deserves. Chris, why don't you go out there and look? Very well. <laughs> I don't know why we wasted so uh, much no, time no, 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 no. Um, Bri Briv's gonna walk this. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brib walks out. Uh, as soon as he does, Arpira's like, oh, no, all right, I'll come with, and she'll stumble uh, after him. Oh, Brib is now a leader. Brib walks out. And you see written on blood on the walls. Welcome home. Is it And written? on the ground is a tiny red cap. Okay. I pick up the yeah. cap. A and, dead griff is inside. <gasps> um, that's all right. It, it, that I happens and I can just start this. casting it as a ritual to summon griff again. I know I shall get blamed for this. No, oh, I. We didn't. No, no, you won't get blamed. That's. Oh, oh poor kitty. Kira, thou art here, yeah. thank goodness. No, I followed you. This is horrifying. Thou art the witness. I did not kill this vicious beast. No, no. You didn't. Is this the same person who sent us the letters? I, uh, what hat, so I, I pick up the hat, and there's a dead flying cat. So there actually is not, not, because when my familiars drop to zero hit points, they disappear. There is the form of the dead cat. Oh, oh. is it is it Griff, or is it another dead cat? It looks exactly like Griff. It has the wings. And as Griff is holding it, its eyes open, <laughs> open and it smiles. Oh, Briv is done. Briv runs back into the hut. <laughs> do you? What do you do with the? What do you do with the hat? What do you do with the cat? I drop it off. <laughs> is it undead? Has the cat turned into an undead cat? Perhaps it is just an illusion. Is, is it? Is it real? Is it still smiling? Is it undead? Who who ran into the hut and who did not? Rib did, I did and not. when he gets in there, he says, "'Twas not my fault, but thine hideous beast is dead out there. But then it woke up with golden eyes and smiled. I didn't even know such a creature could do such a thing, but it was horrible." So I will be able to see how through worse. Griff's eyes as Griff went out there. The eyes are dark. There's darkness. As it all happened? Yeah, as you are looking through Griff's eyes, you see darkness. But you can hear Griff's breathing. And then you see a slight red glow in this shadowy place where Griff is. And you see a tiny old man with a white beard and a red cap smiling at you holding up a scythe give this back to her I'll see you soon and he reaches out towards your eyes with the scythe bye now thank you so much and you snap and out of it. 
Griff dies, and in your hand is a scythe. And so I'm still outside. What's what's in the hat? What am I seeing? Uh, Wait. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. In the in the hat, there's nothing. A moment ago, there was a dead cat. It was a dead. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can I can I just clarify this timeline quickly? Yes. I'm, I'm confused. So I sent Griff outside the. I then saw through Griff's eyes a man in a red cap who said, give this back to her. Right. Then killed it, and then a scythe appeared, but no magic can get into the hut without my okay. That's correct. Okay. And then Griff died, and then they walked out and they saw a cat in the hat, and then it disappeared? That's correct. Okay. I'm too horrified to make a joke. I will walk back inside. Yeah. Something uh, in the very fabric of the we feels disturbed at this exact moment. Something's broken, and this is not how this is supposed to happen with the tiny hut. It should be a safe place. What is it? Uh, there's a hat out there, and a moment ago, there was her dead cat, but it's gone. And there's a message in blood, and everything feels wrong. So, hi, it nice said, to see you welcome again. home. Yeah. Who's home is this? Rarves. Oh, then it, it's not a message for us, of course. Well, and Penelope, that, that, that is... That is naive, Penelope. That scythe Penelope that Lindra is holding is your scythe that you left in Avernus. Oh, she's holding it inside the yeah. hut. It was as if it was placed in Alindra's hands without her knowing it. Oh, okay. Ah, uh. Penelope looks at it a little strange, sparking something. She's going to walk over and, and look at it a little closer. Is, is this yours, Adindra? I don't believe so. No. It's, it's, it's mine. It's... It's mine. Never remember. We're remembering now. Never remember. No. It's, um, it's not mine. It's not. No, I think uh, it is. You see, you hear more horns blaring outside as the ships have now made dock. And the entourage of the goblins have started to get off the ships, along with the Hobgoblin King. Penelope, where did you leave this? I left it in a hot place. Hot. Hot. Avernus. Should not be here. Penelope, mm. have you spoken with the person, with the, the, the creature, who yes. brought you back? What creature? What? <laughs> she does not even remember that she betrayed what? us by signing a deal with the devil. Did she, she? I didn't know she betrayed us. I, th I thought she was just. That's what I that heard was... from Alindra. And Alindra is supposedly always right. 
not always right. I'm more often wrong. You do hear footsteps now on the rooftop. There's a creaking. On the hut? No, on the rooftop of the building. Oh. Do you think we should leave? This place is getting creepy. We've just been attacked. Maybe we should leave. I think... I think I'll keep this. Penelope grabs the scythe. You said it was mine? Thou didst say that. It was my left helper remember. In the hells. It should not be here. So was Spiral. But he floated up on the ocean. It's stained with blood. It's stained with the blood of something divine. Oh. <laughs> um. Is that flirking cat thing gone from outside Okira? It wasn't in the hat. I'll Very stick well. my head back out. He'll ask that. I'll stick my head back out of the hut. Is the okay. blood still there? Is the hat still there? What's still there? The blood's still there. The cat, the red cap is still there. Okay. There's no sign of Griff. I'll pull my head back in. Cat's gone. Hat, still there. Creepy blood, still there. Footsteps, footsteps. We should focus on the footsteps. I shall go in the hut. Yeah, Pen- Penelope will go investigate. She wants out of this room. Okay. You think we're being framed, Penelope? I'm handing her back her sign. Honestly, I just want to go back to my forest. I don't know. Uh, I need a perception check from anyone that knows anything about magic. Anyone roll Arcana? Any print checks first? I know that it what, smells like you? rain sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm good oh, at, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, perception first. 20 perception. Wow. I got a 9... 28. All right. A, Anyone else? That high? I got a 19 on perception. Okay. I got 15 on arcana. You are, well, yeah, be, you being of the Order of the Phoenix, uh, you hear the chanting of a spell upstairs from where the creaking was in the rooftop. And you and hear I, the I word. And you first hear the word for fire. Oh, um, I will. Oh, I, I can't see it, can I? No. No, we just hear it. Do I think there's a fireball? Is a fireball coming our way? Or is it, I just Yeah, fire? you think it's definitely a fireball is being cast. Uh, Get inside the hunter area. There's, there's a... So, as I step out, though, there's a ceiling still, right? Yes, there's absolutely a ceiling. It's almost like a okay. V. All right? It's the top of the top of the end of, of itself. Yeah. And, so and I see, ceiling. like, just from standard eyesight, not any kind of magical sense, like, I don't see anything standing in front. I think they're on the ceiling or the roof. Yeah, you can hear the yeah. creaking of wood from the ceiling. Okay. And there's um, not a skylight? There's not any way for this person to see in? No. There's no I, way for them to see in. I, I, as this is happening, and I, I don't know if I can take this kind of action quickly enough, but um, okay. I, it, it, it is my assumption that this hut, you said that it displaced a chandelier. That's and true. I, I am trying to see if that chandelier is connected in some kind of way that I can try to scurry up the hut and basically cave in the roof because I know that no one inside the hut is going to be harmed. Uh, 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 yes, you can, and you try. And I'm going to need a pretty hefty str- a strength check to start breaking through wood, and I doubt can I do athletics around. Yeah, you can do athletics, okay. um, but but the DC is going to be exceptional, like 25. 18 on the die. 
So okay. let's see. Let me just verify what my score is there still. I don't know if my prof uh, proficiency bonus went up this time. Uh, let's see. That is... Uh, that's 24. Oh, just... <laughs> He missed it by one. Okay. So yeah, you right. cracked the wood. You were on, on top of the, the tiny hut. and Well, holding on to the chandelier at the very least and punching through and a fireball is cast. And from your vantage point, Briv, you can see out the very large window that allows you to see the docks. A fireball shoots from the rooftop going right in to the right towards the king of the hobgoblins and explodes, setting the entire block on fire. Men, women, children, soldiers, all hit and blasted by this fireball. And all of the windows in the inn explode and flail out at everyone. Oh, we're in the hut, right? You're, everyone in I the hut up. is fine. Briv, you take seven points of damage from flying glass. And the entire alleyway is filled with smoke. What was that? I don't know, but we gotta go find out. I, I'm gonna fly out and fly out one of the windows. I, I, I would, see people. I yeah. whistle I for okay. um, spiral, and basically, I'm just gonna run out of the now open window and just jump onto him when he uh, zooms or Kira, by. If, okay. if you'd allow it, Penelope would have just like out of reaction jumped on on you oh yeah you. like she'll be super surprised for a second when you do <laughs> and then like gives this wistful little grin and says okay all right and like help you up and then out the window <laughs> um i'm looking for injured people i'm looking for people who are like need healing is is there some sort of initiative here or are we in free action no, there's no initiative. Okay. Um, a Pen Penelope instantly seeing this smoke and fire would just cringe. No, no fire, no fire. And she's going to pull out some dust and some water. And she's going to throw it up into the air and she's going to cast a uh, ice storm in a 300 foot radius and just, just out of reaction and, and freaking out. Oh my gosh. What, what does ice storm do? Uh, Make me land very fast. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a uh, see, 20 foot radius center to point when rain be us. Everyone would need to make a dexterity saving throw within it, uh, but the hailstorm. But it's just a 20 foot radius, right? Yeah. Yeah, are you so, casting yeah, it directly on yourself? Or are you casting it? I think um, I would. No, I would. Well, I would cast it in the uh, area where the fire hit, most likely. Okay. Try to put the. Okay. I need to roll damage. That is eight points. Okay, uh, everyone who fails uh, takes eight points of damage. You see, but basically, a hailstorm hit the burning alleyway and pummel people who have already been burned and damaged, okay, striking them, soldiers, innocents, everything else. And the smoke clears and the fires go out. But now everyone is looking up at you. And I'll be half fine. Um No, 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 I agree. No, no fire right now. And I'll, I'm going to be landing so that I can start immediately casting cure wounds on people. Whoever seems the most injured that I can see. Oh. Okay, you start Briv is trying to get onto Spiral and just simply circle around to whoever the assailants were on the roof. There is one assailant is the man that you saw heading down the staircase. And he is just sitting on his knees. Waiting. And his dirty robe, his dirty cloak is off, and he's wearing wizardly robes, but also inscribed with runes and and, and uh, uh, symbols that indicate that he is of the Imperium. And he is just smiling. I just simply level the sword at him, 
um, and uh, call out, Dost thou surrender or dost thou want death? And Imperium soldiers. What are you yeah, doing? I think we had a hiccup there, uh, Todd, but uh, ultimately I, I'm just circling around and pointing the sword at the individual and just asking, does thou want surrender or does thou want death? I would like to surrender. And his eyes go white for a second and then his pupils return to normal. Is he at the end or is he at the alleyway? And he puts his arms up. I would like to surrender. Okay. I am going to land and put manacles on the individual. Okay. And he screams, we will never make peace with the Goblin Empire. You will all burn. Uh, as, as soon as he starts talking, I just elbow check him, trying to just knock him out. I'm not trying to kill him. Okay, go ahead and roll a strength check with, uh, and just make a just make an attack roll, and I understand what you're trying to do. You have advantage. Um, oh, advantage. Uh, Twenty on the die with the advantage there. <laughs> you you knock him, f just yeah, the f out. He's out. He's completely out. Okay. At the same time, um, goblins are I, now drawing their bows want, against the I imperial want soldiers. To get on top of him. Okay, spirals on top of him. Uh, goblins have now begun to draw their bows against Imper Imperium soldiers. Imperium soldiers have also begun, begun to draw their bows. The Hobgoblin King is a cinder. Hmm. And everyone is looking at Penelope Half Pint. Who's currently like on my leg as I'm landing looking to heal whoever looks the most injured. Yeah. I, you, uh, uh, I, you can begin I, healing. I give Spiral a command to pick up the prisoner with its claws. Okay. And then I'm going to try to move forward with Spiral and land in front of wherever this mob is and where uh, Penelope is. Okay, you are in between t essentially two armies um, gar garrisons that are about to engage in combat. What are you doing? I just simply throw up my hands like this right here and um, say, this attack was instigated by this man. I shall turn him over to thee. And I'm speaking to the uh, goblin tribe um, or the, the clan and the delegate, you know, wh whoever's there and ultimately saying, if thou wilt leave these shores, thou canst deal out thine own justice for this tragedy. No one else needs to die here today. Make a, everyone need, I need everyone who's outside. Well, Briv, I need you to make a perception check. Perception? Okay. Yeah. Um, that's a 14. Yeah. You see that the uh, Imperium soldiers are freaking out. That they're all covered in sweat. They're moving their bows and crossbows. Do very, not attack. Very nervously. Stay thine hand. Uh, no one to... else has to die today. Yep, I need you to roll a persuasion check. Well, I am so good at this. <laughs> All right, let's see. That's, I actually am proficient. <laughs> Not that, that matters too much. Um, that's a 19. Okay. Ooh. Uh see one one young 16-year-old boy who's dressed in armor and, and plate mail with an arrow just calm down and start to lower his bow. Do then the you right see an arrow. 
then you see an arrow fly from the other side and strike him right in the throat. And everyone starts shooting. I'm... So I'm in the process of just healing whoever's eye, like, cure wounds, cure wounds, cure wounds. And then as soon as the, the fighting breaks out, I'm going to start, like, ushering people away. Because I'm imagining that most of the people that I'm healing are probably civilians, not the military. Yeah, right. Uh, the person lands, the person who gets, the, the, the young man who was shot in the throat lands right next to you. And he's, he's bleeding out. You can cast uh, cure wounds on him if you want to. Yep, yep, real quick. Cure wounds. Okay. Riv commands uh, Spiral to grab uh, the the prisoner again, okay, and just go up, and and we're we're going elsewhere um, and for for a little while, and I'm essentially trying to find some place that I think can be secure enough to leave this prisoner at least for a little while, and then he is going to leave flow with the prisoner because with the telepathy range that she has, she can at least mm. alert if someone comes in to try okay. to remove the prisoner. Yeah, and I'm you find a, 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 near, a nearby windmill um, that, that's used for just grinding flour. So you can you can hang him out around there or put him at the top and Flo can guard him. And Flo's still wearing battle, battle armor, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Barbarian Flo. Of course she is. I'll, I'll guard him. <laughs> Alert me at once if someone comes for this prisoner, or if he tries to escape. If he tries to escape, I will stink on him. Very well. Uh, I will say I also have spared the dying as a cantrip, so if I come across anybody who is literally you, you about are, to die. You I do. Just... You you find a yeah. child that's about to die. Yep. And, like and I spare, spare the dying. Spare the dying all over the place all these people are getting at least stabilized and i'll keep like penelope st stay close this place is going up Pen penelope's just kind of like what what did i what did i just do what did i i'm so sorry i'm so sorry and and she just like drops down into her shrubbery and as she does that uh, as a bonus action she casts um healing spirit I'm so sorry, I'll make this better. And you just see like this elk spirit kind of glowing green with flowers and its antlers just flow around. And so anyone within a five foot radius, and I can move it up to 30 feet, just slowly moving it through. And anyone uh, in that radius can heal 1d6 every turn. Okay, is this anyone else want to make an action? You, As you were doing so, yes, people are getting healed. Any, anyone who was potentially going to die is, is getting healed, but there are some... There are dead people. There are people who did not make it. Uh, the, the shooting is happening behind carts, behind walls, and the goblins are screaming, they murdered our king. We should have never trusted them. Lindra, what are you doing? I'm still at the inn, so I need to go um, out to try and find the, the person who we saw with the wand. Uh, that person, uh, well, you know you, you know enough, you saw them fly by as, as, as Spiral literally like flew off with him. It, not, and clearly unconscious. Okay. Um... Then, I mean, I don't if know where they went. If there's a way that I can communicate, like, with any of the folk, like, Alindra, are you still in the... the I was still uh, the in, the, in the hut. You guys all went flying off without me, so... Yeah, so <laughs> it, it, that's where I'm coming back to, so depending how how long it takes her to come out, I'm simply just going to broadcast my intent that I am just trying to, at this point in time, protect the prisoner where we can get answers later. Okay, you know that. With that knowledge, what do you do, Alindra? Wait, I, how, how do I know that? I... He, 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 well, A, you saw the prisoner fly off with the griffin through, okay. through past the window. And and Briv's shouting. You hear people sh shouting from the streets. You hear Briv shouting what he's done. 
he's uh, doing his best to communicate exactly what's going so on. How, how close are they outside? Are they right oh, outside the window? Oh, they're just directly they... below, right directly below the window. Okay, I thought it was okay. Um, yeah, then I guess I'm gonna go outside to go help because that's what I would do. I would go out and heal people. The entire alleyway is covered in ash and snow, and it's, try- it's kind of hard to figure out which is which. Uh, do you try assist in the healing? Mm-hmm. Okay. You begin to heal other people as well. The goblins are um, retreating I, into their I ships. I also am going to... Do I speak goblin? No. Oh, I have tongues on. Yeah, I can. I will go try and speak with the goblins. What yeah, do you try I, saying? I, I see that, the, that they have the healing under control in the alleyway. The and moment I you say, approach them, they raise their bows. Wait, wait, please. I'm not from here. I want to understand what just happened. Your people killed our king, and we are leaving. These are not my people. That doesn't matter to us. And the, you see all of these these hobgoblins and goblins and bugbears scurry back to their ships immediately. Um. Preparing the ships, hoisting the sails, preparing to leave the capital city of Verdeneth. Um. Uh, um. I can I identify who the leader is now now that the the king is dead who the the commander of the troops seems to be yeah there's a there's clearly a commander and uh, um, a large and also very large hobgoblin um, very intelligent looking sharp pointy ears does it look like that but th- that's not the commander. The commander is a different. No, the com- That's the commander that is in charge oh, it... right now. The the king okay. is crisp. He yeah, is I, I know. It's, 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 yeah. I wanted to know who the commander is now. So the, it's yeah, the, com- the hobgoblin, the intelligent looking right. hobgoblin. Okay. Yes. Uh, I am going to cast command on him or her. Uh, using, I have foreseen this moment, I will use my 20 uh, or, or my 8 so they fail as a save or is it my age credit? Okay. Uh, yeah, they're safe. Well, they have for, to save it's, against it's, it, so. Okay. Uh, and I will say parlay. Lower your weapons. <laughs> and the goblins lower their arrows. They lower their bows and crossbows. And wands. What does the other side do? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they also follow suit. Wow. It's, um. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if I see this happening, or Kara will... St- like stumble out between the two armies and try to help heal the other side, anyone that she sees Aww. injured there. So like, spare the dying, spare the dying, spare the dying, because she doesn't <laughs> care. She just wants yeah. to save as many people as she can. Is that a key? Yeah, no. That's cool. Yes, spare the is. dying is, yeah. I can, That's I, awesome. if they, yeah. You, you are running from body to body and sometimes you're horrified by what you see and sometimes you are able to save someone. So you, you are, that's all you have been doing, and you have saved about 20 people so far. I'm indiscriminate. But the way that the fireball went off in the small in the small alleyway, it just spread out and hit everyone. Yeah. And I'm, I'm anyone that I come across, so I don't care what side they were on, but seeing what Alindra has done, I'll try to maneuver so that it's more obvious that I am healing both sides, just to kind okay. of keep up the whole parlay thing. Briv makes right. it back and lands with Spiral near Alindra, 
uh, and uh, kind of hops off and uh, actually uh, sends Spiral back to where they just came from at the windmill uh, to help okay. with flow. And uh, very gently puts his hand on Alindra's shoulder and, uh, and just uh, kind of quietly says, well done, well done. And, um, and then he uh, kind of just steps maybe a foot in front of her, just where he's, in, I, I'm in a position to step in front of her if I needed to, but otherwise I d I'm just silent at her side. Okay. We have what do you one do? who can perhaps try and stabilize your king. Would you permit her? Oh, he's dead. Chance? Okay, so there's no. He, he is a charred skeleton. Okay, never mind. I would not say that then. He was ground. <laughs> sorry, yeah. Better. He was ground zero. <sighs> okay. Um, I I saw the face of the one who caused this. If we bring him to you, would you consider opening the peace process? Our king is dead. Hand over anyone who has anything to do with this conspiracy, and we will leave and not burn your city to the ground. I will need to find him. I. It will take time. All he right. was gone before I could locate him. Because it's true, I didn't. I didn't see Spiral pick him up, right? Yes, you, you saw him fly by so, in so Spiral's fly. hand. Yeah. In his claws. Okay. Uh, okay. So you then, are aware um, that Briv has him. Uh, Briv just I, looks at Alindra and basically nods at her that he's following her lead at this point with this situation. Who is commanding the Imperium in this town? Or in the, in the capital now? Who's the leader of the Imperium? Uh, the leader of the uh, Imperium is King Theron. Okay. Um, we... Uh, boy. And is there a diplomatic advisor? Yeah, there's just a car to Var. Okay. I know that I am not equipped to manage that, that negotiation. Okay. Do I know anything about goblins and hobgoblins in terms of who they would trust as a neutral party to broker a conversation? Definitely not an elf. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, someone who is maybe perhaps a little bit of both worlds. Someone definitely who's not an elf, a human, um, or a halfling. Uh, or Kira and Brith? Or is there someone in the town that I know of who would be a neutral party? No, you've not spent necessarily a lot of time in the capital. Okay. I can assist as thou dost deem, Alindra. I know the ways of war. But do you know the ways of peace? Peace is the flip side of war. I have sought it for the last five years. And I look carefully at Briv. Because Briv in the past has not been the person I would send to broker a peace process. <laughs> um, what do I see in Briv's eyes? Uh, what you want to see. <laughs> I mean, if he there, appears to be genuine, he's being genuine about this. There, there, there's no deception from Briv on this. He definitely does not want these two sides fighting for for something that one person or a small group of people did. 
Um, I will also message Orkira and say, we could use you right now. Are there any other people who look injured in the area? Because You've done, uh, between the healing spirit and you've seen this, this amazing glowing elk move from hurt person to hurt person between the spell that was cast by Penelope and Orakira's healing spells. Everyone seems to be stabilized that could be stabilized. Not everyone survived, but many people have lived because of what you've both done. I'll, and the buildings are no longer burning. I'll look down at Penelope when I think we've got everybody and said, your elk is pretty cool. Thanks. I think Alindra needs our help. Okay. We'll walk on over. Okay. Uh, what happens is the soldiers, a small delegation of the soldiers, led by a man named Gidras, who is the commander, have agreed to meet at the inn with King Theron, with whoever is responsible for this action. So uh, the king is coming? The king is coming. Of the Imperium. So this is going to be a Briven or Kira scenario. Um, and I... Briv, I think you should bring our... perpetrator here. I shall seek to guarantee his safety before we bring him here, but we we will produce him at the inn once everyone arrives. You are not not known in this particular city, so when it comes to there is a, a legend of a Penelope half pint. There is people know of Alindra, at least with her work at the Library of Norn. So I wouldn't say famous, but certainly not distrusted. So it's easy for you to be in the same room at the same time during this these discussions. So a table is set up and a modest contingent of soldiers from the Imperium, including King Theron, arrives as well. They're trying not to escalate things by necessarily having the entire army show up. And they arrive at the Blue Kraken Inn. <laughs> and Roar and Boom Boom <laughs> are placed in a very unusual position. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I knew glass windows were a bad investment, and everyone tried to tell me no, but yeah. We did talk uh, about tried... having wooden windows again, Rav. This is. Uh, not... you know, I put a lot of effort to, to remake this in 18 hour but days for three months. <laughs> Fishman, stop thine complaining and make sure that thou. Listen, pig man, I don't want to hear it. Are taken care of. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that when Briv brings the prisoner that uh, he is completely disarmed. He is gagged. uh, His hands are firmly bound and he has no wand, no spell components, nothing on him. Um, So no verbal, no somatic, and no uh, material components available to him to cast spells to try and get out of this. Okay. Do you no, bring him to the table, shackled up, with all? I'm going to so, trust uh, Briv on this. Okay. Yeah. So ultimately, Briv is going to concentrate really hard um, and try to contact Flo, and essentially, uh, we in our five years by ourselves for the most part in the wasteland, we um, worked out you know training where Flo actually can signal Spiral. And mm-hmm. so uh, Briv's just going to stay at the tavern and uh, like kind of at the door and expect for Spiral uh, to return with Flo uh, in the saddlebag. And then uh, with the perpetrator in 
the griffin's claws. Okay. While we're while we're all waiting for that to awkwardly happen, Orkira's gonna sidle up to Linda and go, um, what am I supposed to be doing? You're here to help broker the peace. Uh, okay. How? Keep Riv from hitting everyone. I've never been able to do that before. Why do you think I can do that now? <laughs> Someone has to try. And they won't trust me, so... Alright. If you trust me, I'll try. I do. The Hobgoblin ask... Commander, uh, you hear... Just... Because you still have Comprehend Languages on, right? Mm -hmm. That was... It's the king is his brother. But... Yeah. His... Well, that's his brother that died. His king is the brother. He is next in line for the throne. And he is pissed. This is the Hobgoblin? Yes. He also has a wand at his side. And where is he? He is waiting. He is now the leader of the goblins. And is he, he inside is the tavern? Or? He's inside the tavern already, sitting at the table. Waiting for this guy who cast the fireball to show up. So the king and both of the, the kings are there. At this very moment, King Theron arrives and enters the door. And I message Briv and I say, do not let him use the wand unless you want. Bad things happening. Mm, before Is it the, all this it's not the things. same wand as I saw earlier, right? No, absolutely not. And you do see a wizened hobgoblin that briefly before um, before this commander Gedras, who is the head of the hobgoblins at this time, I mean the goblins in general, he whispers something to this wizened old uh, hobgoblin tiny little eyes and drooping pointy ears and also a long gray white beard and he just he acknowledges and you hear you do hear wait here way outside which who who in the room seems most like trigger happy at the moment who seems most like on edge uh Gadras. Uh, is it is it possible Penelope would like to walk up to Gadras and just <sighs> lay a hand and just say, everything will be okay. And she's going to try to cast Charm Person. Just be calm. Ooh. Uh, go ahead and roll can uh, Charm Person. It's, it's a save against a 14 wisdom. Oh dear. And what do you, do you say when when you cast charm person I anything? Just, I just say just stay calm. It'll all be okay. <laughs> stay calm. It'll be okay. So wait, who was that good grass I think you said or something? Good grass. Githras, is that the hobgoblin soon to be king? Yes. Or? Okay, yes. got it. And he's at the table, and King Theron, uh, a half-elf, uh, long, long white hair, still pointy ears and a beard, um, adorned in purple and golden robes, sits down at the other side of the table. Hopefully and Spiral gets there. I'm sure it's after... Much longer than it should be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you, you, very specifically, Spiral delivers you this person. So right. do you bring them into the inn? Yes, I am going to oh. be. And this individual, I should be able to just, you know, under under the arm and br bringing uh, them in. I remember Alindra saying something about gagging. So I take, uh, you know, an apple out of my satchel and stick it in his mouth. Um, okay. Make sure his teeth have to sink down into it. 
Um, and uh, he does not think that he can bite through the apple. Um, and, uh, and then he remembers something about, uh, he pulls out his second uh, set of manacles, I do have two, and uh, puts them on uh, the ankles. Okay, the you do so. And uh, just pull, uh, pull the person in, shield kind of protecting the person as I drag them in under my arm. Okay. Are they still unconscious? Drag- uh, no, they're awake now. Okay. Uh, black and blue, certainly, from their injuries. And uh, they're just sitting there sweating in a chair with an apple in their mouth. And basically, two armies are outside the inn at this very moment. And you can see everyone watching from the windows outside that have now been blown out. And... Gidras asks for a pint of ale. And Rar shows up. He's like, and yeah, that'll be no problem. Uh, all things considered, I think that'd be on the house. And he pours a pint of ale. The and fish man does the circus. Gidras holds open the, uh, holds up the, uh, the pint and puts it back down on the table. May I have um, Griff come back as a Tressum and sniff that? Because as a Tressum, Griff would have poison sense. Uh, you, you may, and you don't smell any poison at all. Great. So. We have gathered here to broker peace. Hundreds or thousands should not die because of one man's deeds. The man I speak of sits before you. I witnessed him send down the fire that cost you the life of your king. I believe that this man should stand trial for his actions and he should be held accountable for what has occurred here today and everyone should leave in peace. Let's hear what the prisoner has to say. The hobgoblin speaks. Riv grabs the apple. Okay. Pulls it out. Or Kira's going to move up at that point when they're going to interrogate this guy. She's going to say, uh, let me make sure that we believe what he's saying. And she's going to cast Zone of Truth. Nice. He needs to make it, a charisma saving throw. Do you make a display DC. of doing this? Um, I don't think she would think to. No, I think she'd say we're going to make I mean, sure he's telling the truth. It's a hard thing to be secret about it. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, not tr- I'm definitely not trying to be secretive, but I'm not going to explain what I'm doing. Like, yeah. I don't think she thinks to be like, and now I can't. Well, so she's. Yeah. <laughs> this is a hobgoblin, and he. You see a glint in his eye. Uh, he knows exactly what you're casting. Okay. Hobgoblins cool. are not stupid, and they're extremely magically proficient. I'm cool with that. If people know if what I'm doing, but yeah. permit, mine ally is going to make sure that the words spoken by this dredge of society are truthful to thine ears. What he said. (laughs) The hobgoblin speaks. And well, Theron speaks like, we had nothing to do with this attack. We will make amends. I am sorry for the loss of your brother. We do not know how this happened or how this man circumvented our security. This does not mean we have to go to war. Brim and, likes what he's hearing, but he actually wants to see if he believes this guy. Uh, you can roll, roll a inside check. Um, oh, yeah, you believe him. I mean, he seems, he realized, the, the king seems very aware of the, the tenuous situation going on right now. The hobgoblin, who is essentially now king, Gidras, turns to the prisoner. Why did you attack 
us. And I'll cast Zone of Truth. So he needs the prisoner needs to make a uh, charisma saving throw DC 15. And if he saves, I I know if he saved or failed. I believe. Are the uh, are the yeah. the kings also in the zone? It's a fifteen foot radius yeah. sphere. Yeah. I would I would try to. So it's a not... thir- so it's a thirty foot diameter. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so everybody. I think everybody room. has. Yeah. We're all yeah. gonna be so truthful. Yeah. So uh, honest. So everyone, honest. Right everyone fa- yeah. Everyone failed the roll. Um, okay. That includes all of us. I don't know if it includes me I... actually. Well, I wouldn't worry about that I, right now. <laughs> I have foreseen this moment, and I succeed on this, okay. so I am not okay. affected. And, and yes, on a, uh, I know whether each creature succeeds or fails on its saving throw. So if there's anybody that succeeds and is uh, not affected, I know. So I give okay. Alindra kind of a wink. <laughs> and I give you a look. <laughs> Does anybody else succeed in this room? What's a safe? 15. Charisma. <laughs> okay. Riv just starts saying, Simmons is old. He should have been out of the game years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, Riv, you don't have to. Not Ed. <laughs> yeah. Gidras, the Hobgoblin King, again says, Who ordered you to shoot at us? And the prisoner slowly looks up. I will allow anyone with Arcana to make an Arcana check. He's got a blank stare in his eyes. 27. He seems fractured. It's almost like there's a tremor in his hands and a tremor in his eyelids. And he just smiles. I was ordered by King Theron to murder your brother. Uh, can I? And the rest of this... your family back home are already dead. Is is this uh, something where I can tell what's affecting him? No. He's being and... controlled by someone. But he's telling and the you, truth. You just no, he's being see it's magic. the blood vessels just erupt in the neck of Gidras. He's telling the truth. No, he's the, the spell. The spell acted on him. The murder. No, I'm not listening to any more elven or human lies or halfling lies anymore and he re- holds up his mug and he just drops it and the mug hits the table and spells i cast tiny hut around us okay um let me see if he'll go doesn't in. it take 10 minutes or is it yeah i uh, no, yeah i mean if i do it as a ritual but it's if i do it as a oh i, I don't have no worries you're right Nah. Okay, can I uh, can I counter spell on the guy? No, I don't know who's casting it. Arg. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, you you don't have eyes on it, and Briv is going to if I get to act. Briv is going to literally sling the table, and it's going to go spinning, and he's going to step between the two kings. Okay, you do. You step between the two. Twas obviously some type of trickery or devilry. Someone is trying to start a war, and you are falling right into their hands. Calm thyself. The war has already begun. Your home is burning. Is this and the guy? You hear, is this, this is the Hobgoblin Gadras. We are leaving now, and you hear a thunderous boom. What you 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 punch the king? 
I try to punch the king in the face. Yes, if he's making uh, through. All right, roll, roll your attack roll. As you do so, you hear a thunderous boom from up above in the sky. And Okira, out the window, you see the, the wizened hobgoblin wizard chanting, holding his arms up. Dirty 20 on that attack roll. Hip, hypnotic you just pattern. knock the king out. Uh, it, this is already too late. I, and you so, see, so Briv's plan, Briv is unconcerned with the destruction out there because he does not think he can do anything about it, but he is going to grab this king and fly away with him. With oh, wow. <laughs> All oh, right, the, the, the hobgoblin, the hobgoblin king. Yes. That is All right, correct. you do so. Uh, you, no, you knock him flat out and oh, wow. you grab him and you're running for spiral. Yes. While you are doing this, you see a red light flaring up into the sky and you see meteors. I'm sure I do. Cross through the oh. clouds oh. and begin to descend oh, upon the city, the capital city of Verendeth. And meteor after meteor strikes start striking the city as all the goblins flee towards their ships. And Briv <sighs> Steelmarrow flies off with the hobgoblin gobl king into the sky, dodging meteor after meteor. And that's the end of our adventure. I hope everyone enjoyed <laughs> chapter two of Heroes of the Veil, <laughs> episode oh. one. <laughs> uh, we will be back all. next week for episode two of chapter two <laughs> of Heroes of the Veil. Thank you so much for our, our amazing cast. Uh, Hope Lavelle playing Penelope, Adam Bradford for playing Briv, Lauren Urban or Kira, and Jen Kretschmer playing Alindra. Thank you so much for watching. And there's a lot more to come.